Hey everybody, welcome to the Beyond Big Influence show with Jesse Dobeck. We are now live on Facebook, about six different channels right now. So it's really, really exciting. It's supposed to be eight channels, but I don't know if it showed up on my personal Facebook. If it did, drop a comment, click the like, click the hearts, share this out. This is gonna be a, an incredible session with one of my great friends. We got Don Morgan in the house. How you doing, Don? I'm great, thank you. Awesome. So we're gonna dive in and I'm going to dig inside and pick your brain because you are a expert, an expert about finding freedom for yourself, for your life. And you know, beyond financial, this is, you know, like there's, there's a lot to it. And I'm gonna share with the, the community who you are because you're a hypnotherapist, you're a resilience coach, you're a trainer, mentor, and business owner. Don has experienced trauma, terrorist attacks, divorce, being a single parent on benefits, redundancy more than once, relationship breakdowns, and a whole lot more. And she has always bounced back. Okay. So she has been through a lot of trauma situations. You know, she's thriving. I'm going to, you know, we're going to dig in and, and share, but she believes that life is for living and we can learn about ourselves from everything that we experience, good or bad. We can take those experiences, use them to grow, or we can use them to shrink. It's our choice. So let's, I, I like, you know, using experiences to grow because you either win or you learn. There's no like, you know, I lost and that's it. Cause you know, if that's, if that's your mindset, then man, it's going to be a tough life. Right? So, so I really like that. I think positivity is really, really powerful. And um, John, Don chose growth and thinks that you should too. And we all, all have everything that we need within us, hope, resilience, compassion, wisdom, and confidence. And Don's mission here today is to help you uncover yours so you can become free in your life on all levels. So Dawn also has her own podcast, Overcoming Anxiety with Dawn Morgan. So she's, she does a lot of outdoors activities to keep her mind right. She likes to travel. Right now you're living in Spain, right, Dawn? That's right. Yes, I am. Okay, awesome. And you've also lived in England, Scotland, Germany, Zambia, and now you're mm -hmm. living in Spain, right? Yeah. Any, any, anywhere else that you lived? Uh, no, that's it for now. Several places in, in England, but yeah. They said. Uh, okay. So you're from the UK then, huh? I am. Yes. Yeah, I could tell obviously the accent. So. <laughs> but uh, but you know you like a lot of outdoor stuff. So do I. You know kayaking, expeditions, uh, climbing, shooting, teaching, first aid. So you 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 know a lot of stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna pick your brain a little bit today, and um, you know just dive into it. So so can you tell us a little bit about your background? You know, this is the Beyond Big Influence show. So, so you know, your a little bit of your background and how you became an entrepreneur through all of this stuff. Yeah, well, it's 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 quite interesting because most of my life, I you know, a big chunk of my life, I was a single parent. So, I spent a lot of time just making ends meet, just getting the money together to pay the bills at the end of the the month, and and doing that and moving around quite a bit. I worked with a lot of incredible people in a lot of different business settings. So I started to learn a lot. So rather than just see these things as a means to an end to, to you know, pay the bills, I thought, okay, while I'm here, while I'm doing this sort of job that isn't amazing, I'm going to learn whatever I can. And I was getting promoted very quickly through these businesses, lots of different challenges and solving problems. So I learned to um, solve problems, to help people through change management and uh, train staff and just see where the gaps were in these organizations. My background is also finance, so a lot of finance um, implications there as well. So I just became this sort of problem solver. You know, there's a problem. Let's let's fix it. Let's work out what we can do. And, and in that process, I started coaching people and, and training them. And, and it sort of all started from there. So eventually, when my, my children got to an age where they didn't need me as much, I could start sort of branching out and trying new things. Then it wasn't about just, you know, 
uh, paying the bills, I could do something different. And that's when I really started that growth journey, because that's when I realized I'd been living in this horrible state of anxiety for years about, you know, paying bills and can I buy the kids shoes and doing all these these things. And I was living in my head and not actually experiencing life. Yeah, I think a lot of people, you know, in entrepreneurship, they're dealing with a lot of those things, you know, pressures, they're trying to figure out, you know, how to get through. There's a lot of anxiety and, and things to overcome. And, you know, you've done an amazing job getting through that. And you, you also have a, a family, you got a grandchild. I do. I have a grandson now, yes, which yeah. is why I'm living in Spain, because I wanted to come and live near him. So I've just spent the uh, first year of his life with him, which has been amazing. OK, now that's awesome. So so what what are you looking to do with your brand, like everything that you're doing, going to the next level, helping clients? I know you're working on several different businesses and that what what is your vision for what you want to do next? Like where do you want to take this thing? Who do you no, want to help? Um, well, I, I suppose what I'm I'm looking at doing is is working with people that have that don't really understand why they're doing what they're doing, why they are behaving in in the way they they are, to help them understand their own psychology, to to allow them to see that um, looking for external validation or outsourcing our well-being to other people actually doesn't bring us what we want. It's about doing the inner work and uncovering those limiting beliefs, uncovering all that um, modeling and the society pressures, you know, the rules and regulations that have been put around us our whole mm -hmm. lives and the anxiety that comes with trying to comply with all of that mm -hmm. stuff and how we can just shed it mm -hmm. and be our true selves. Yeah. Have you seen anything? I mean, like, I think right now it's it's a very difficult time because we got social media and there's a lot of social pressure behind that. You know, people are yeah. posting their wins and their things. And then we judge ourselves like, you know, I don't have that Lamborghini or whatever that guy's posting over there. Or, you know, maybe I they're doing a live event over here and they got, you know, 4000 people at their event. And I've been doing what I'm doing for just as long of a period of time. And I got 10 people at my live event right so there's a lot of like things there that that you need to overcome you know i was listening to uh, joe dispenza and he was saying you know that's if you feed into that it's just going to keep pulling you down down more and more into the into the abyss of failure right so if you if you get clear with yourself and who you are and focus on what you need to do to go to the next level and, and focus your mindset and, and those limiting beliefs, figure out how to get rid of those, then now you can start thriving and moving towards the path that is going to be successful for you. So, so what are you seeing right now out there that you focus on to, you know, go well, I think get clear? <clears throat> Yeah, the fact that you've mentioned the um, the comparison thing, you know, that that's a big thing. And certainly over the last couple of years, a lot of people are being told how they should feel, you know, the whole sort of pandemic stuff and people should be depressed or anxious yeah. and all these various things. And people buy into that. And it's really difficult to um, step outside of it. And I, I think one of the things that I advise people to do is to watch – their diet but their social media mm -hmm. diet their their who are they what are they listening to what yeah. you know all these all these different opinions and most of our news nowadays is not actually factual it's all opinion based yeah and the whole social media thing you know it's only what people want you to see it's not real and we all have our own life path to travel on and what mm -hmm. happens is we end up getting into this horrible state of anxiety because there's just so much stuff. And where do we go? And what decisions do we make? And, you know, and most of us go through life, and certainly I did for many years, without any sort of plan or goal or aim. You know, you just sort of end up on a day-to-day -day basis just sort of functioning, surviving, doing what you need to do to put food on the table or pay the bills or whatever it is. But I also see that with people who who want to be entrepreneurs, who want to actually make a difference in the world, but there's so much choice out there. There's so many things for them to consider all the time. It, 
you know, it gets overwhelming. They don't know where to go. Um, and therefore, getting some sort of plan and understanding why they're feeling the way they're feeling and understanding where limiting beliefs can, can come from. You know, for example, if if you were always introduced as a child to other adults as, oh, this one's the shy one, or this is the clever one, or this, <laughs> you know, oh you know, because parents I can do relate that. to that one. Yeah. Oh my gosh, my whole life. Jesse's shy. Then I'm getting more and more shy because I'm feeding into that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like when I was in high school, like, sorry, I, I just really have to have to let this one out because it's like I get this one all the time, right? Like I'm, I'm live online and somebody's watching this podcast right now that went to high school with me. They're like, Jesse was the shyest person ever. That's because all my coaches, all my peers, all my family, everybody around me said that I was an introvert. I'm so shy and I'm this and I'm that, but I'm a great athlete. And I'm a good, you know, on the yeah. basketball court and this. But then that was even taking my confidence away from what I was great at. You know, I was like exactly. as a kid. I was I was free and and the more that I fed in and lost confidence in sports, I mean you can just look at my career. When I was like five years old, I was like four for four, four home runs in my first day of T ball. By the time I get to high school and my coach is calling me Jessica and everybody's saying, you know, like, oh, he, he's not really a baseball player and you know, you know, they're from the other little league that I always beat growing up, so they're just out to get me, you know, and the, all this politics. I started thinking that I was just garbage, like in yeah. baseball, basketball, like at times. And then I saw myself going from a starter as like a freshman, sophomore in high school basketball to like on the bench as a senior. And then like, you know, then I tried to revitalize myself after that. But anyway, confidence is a real thing. And it it's affected me through my whole life in so many different ways. Yeah. And, and it, but yeah. Confidence anyway. is Confidence is knocked out of us because what happens is as, as children, as, as babies and toddlers, we've got boundless confidence because otherwise none of us would be, <laughs> yeah. you know, you know, use, using the loo and, and oh, sort of walking and talking and all the rest of it, you know, because babies don't think, oh, well, you know, um, oh, I've fallen down again, so I'm not going to walk. You know, they, they don't turn away from the challenge. They just keep going. But then what happens is we go to school and, of course, then you get – told that's wrong you can't do this you shouldn't do that you know um you 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 spelt that wrong or you've added that sum up wrong or and and then we get this concept of i need to get things right i need to do well because that's where my worth is and and we end up with all these horrible labels that really limit us and that's where those limiting beliefs come in Another example would be a child who perhaps is always shushed when they're, they're young, you know, and they have parents who perhaps are super busy and don't really have time to take conversations with them. So they might grow up with the idea that they're, what they have to say is not important. And therefore, you know, their whole life, they sort of shrink away. They just, you know, they're in the background. They just take what's coming to them and they're not going to speak up and, and, you know, say what they feel. So there's all these different things that just simmer away in the background. And what's really interesting when I start working with people is once they realize where these things have come from, they're so much easier to let go. Because when you're five and you've decided you're you're shy and you carry that because everybody's reinforcing that for years. You carry it into your, I still, adulthood. I still think about it because I've heard it a thousand yeah. times. I've heard it probably a hundred thousand yeah. times. Yeah. And then now I go out on stage. They're like, this guy's a freaking maniac. I'm like, if, it, if people were telling me that when I was one, yeah. zero years old or one year old, exactly. Uh, you know what, I, what, what would I have done out of my shell for like 30 years? I was in my shell for 30 yeah. years, caged up like a freaking animal. Exactly. And now I'm like, dude, now I can go out and like explore the world and like yeah. go in these social settings and thrive and go on stage and do a podcast and all these things. It's like, man, er, people are fed so much negativity and it holds yeah. people back so much that, I mean, yeah, it's just amazing. It's, but it's it, it not. Really is, yeah. The thing is, it's not all negativity. So if, for instance, somebody says, um, in, introduces you or you're known as the clever one, 
Yeah. You know, that's not negative, but it yeah. can be a limiting belief. It can yeah. be, oh. yeah, yeah, you know, good, charging yeah. forward. Yeah. I have to constantly learn more stuff. I can't constantly prove myself yeah. to others because <laughs> the I'm the pressure. clever one. And that's the my pressure label. Now. The that's pressure. Right? Exactly. Like, I'm, Jesse's the best baseball player. Like, I, I literally, when I was nine years old, I was – Running like, uh, you know, I was warming up before the game and I was just running like from like foul pole to foul pole. And this one guy, he came, he was on a bike. He's like, who's Jesse Dubeck? Because everybody called me Jesse Dubeck, even though, you know, now I say my name right, Jesse Dubeck. But anyway, he's like, who's Jesse Dubeck? I just rode, I just rode for 45 minutes my bike to watch him play. Because he's supposedly the best, one of the best players around in Little League, right? And then I was like, that's me, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but that pressure carried yeah. over to then when I went into majors, because this is when I was in minors. You weren't allowed to be nine years old and be in majors. But when I was, I, but people, they wanted me in majors when I was nine years old because I was good. And then when I was 10 years old, I was the best I ever was. I got invited to be in the stars because I didn't have as much pressure because I'm only 10 years old. Then I become 11, I start hitting home runs. I wasn't hitting home runs when I was 10, but I was hitting a lot of doubles, singles, like, you know, I was still a good, I was still really good in the league. But then when I went to be 11 years old, mm -hmm. now I can hit home runs. Now I started feeling the pressure caving in a little bit more, right? But I had a pretty good season as an 11 year old. As a 12 year old, now I had all the pressure of like all of San Santee where I grew up on me. Yeah. So then literally that, that kind of screwed me up during that year. I think I did worse when I was 12 than I, when I was 11, but I should have done way better. Cause I was like, you know, three inches taller and way stronger and bigger, you know, and then going into the next league and the next league and the next league, I always thought I had to, I was supposed to be the best cause I was the best in my little league. When I went to pony league, I was supposed to be the best. And when I went into Pony League, there was like 14 year olds that went through puberty and that wasn't me. Like I was late going through puberty and stuff. So they were like way stronger and bigger. I still made the all-star team. I was still good, but I wasn't the top player in the league anymore. And it started really making me just not love playing, you know? So anyway, uh, this is bringing up a lot for me. So sorry for that. But, <laughs> but, but the, the thing is, you see, when we give labels, they can become our identity. So whether that label is something positive or something that's perceived as negative, it 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 creates an identity. So when people say, I suffer with anxiety, you know, I try to change it and say, no, actually, you experience anxiety because it's not who you are. And all these limiting beliefs from that we've gathered it's like a rucksack that as soon as we're born it's like this metaphorical rucksack that comes on our back mm -hmm. and then all these things it's it's a learning journey there or you know um mum's not coming to me when i cry so maybe i'm not worthy enough so i'll stick that in the rucksack and you know the shyness or the extrovert or the introvert or the you know um sporty or not sporty or academic or pretty or whatever these things are these when they are reinforced they become beliefs but the good news is if we can reinforce those words we know those re, um, words reinforce and create beliefs if we start using different language and different words we can create new beliefs so we can really, and that's where the, the freedom comes because your past does not dictate your future. It doesn't matter what awful things have happened to you in the past. You only take them in, if you choose to take them into the future, they'll have an impact, but you can leave them where they are. You know, I don't, I don't take my, for example, you know, I'm sure at some point when I was a toddler, I wet the bed. Well, I don't let that affect me now. And, you know, this, this, but, you know, a lot of people take certain things from their childhood and it's still affecting them. Mm. But, and that's where the freedom comes from, because once we realize our, our, how our psychology works, we can let go of that and we can just set it free. And, and therefore we can become whoever we want to become. Yeah. I mean, this is all amazing stuff. I mean, I'm really, you know, it, it's honestly, I'm like fired up, like talking about it. That's why I'm like taking the floor and be like, oh my gosh, this isn't telling the story. I mean, I think there's a lot of people out there doing this because I always see people like Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, or 
doing a post like F all the haters or, you know, whatever. They're, they're like talking about the haters and you got to squash them all. But, you know, and Gary Vaynerchuk and people like that, I mean, they get a lot of hate, but he also gets a lot of love online. And some people are just looking for some attention. Like I want some love and some hate. And they're like, they'd be happy to be, be doing what Gary Vaynerchuk's doing. But, but yeah, I mean, it, it's a real thing out there. I mean, there's a lot of people getting depressed, you know, there's like a lot, the, probably the suicide rates up, you know, like as far as people, you know, having PTSD symptoms and stuff because there's just so much pressure. And yeah. um, I have a question for you though, cause you know, I think this is big. Why choose anxiety as your focus? Because anxiety comes into everybody's life. And anxiety is a really good tool. It's there to, it's like your little alarm clock. It's there to remind you about things. If you set goals, it's sort of, you know, or or get out of bed, stop drink, you know, stop pressing the buzzer um, and snoozing. You need to get <laughs> up or reminding you that you've got an appointment or you're, you know, you've got a, a any sort of, thing that is on your list to do so it's it's a reminder of your to-do list um but what happens is when we pile on so many expectations so many unhelpful expectations and and life gets overwhelming because we're trying to meet society standards we're trying to comply with the social media images or the you know the work commitments and we're not aligned with our true selves the way that we are naturally designed to to work because we're not all entrepreneurs. We're not all extroverts or introverts or whatever label we want to use. So it's about getting aligned with our, ourselves and understanding where those unhelpful external pressures are coming from. And we can let go of that debilitating anxiety, that stuff that disrupts you and embrace any anxiety that does come up. But also it's about not being fearful of it. It's a body reaction. You know, it, there's, there's a, 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 a great story. A, a friend of mine explained that he, um, he'd had an argument with his wife and she went off to get the children from school and he was stood in his kitchen and he was still furious. And what he worked out right there and then was how can you be angry with somebody who's not even there? And it's because mm. it's about holding on to it. It's about that moment. You know, most of us have been in a meeting where we've come out and thought, oh, I wish I'd said that. And why, you know, if I said it this way. And then we spend the next couple of hours or days or weeks <laughs> rewriting what we should have said yeah. rather than just sort of saying it's done, it's gone, you yeah. know. And so there's, there's so much to do with um, our normal living that creates anxiety because it is, it's absolutely created. It's in our, it's in our heads. Um, there's, a, there's a great quote, you know, we can't control what happens around us, but we can control how we react to it. Yeah, 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 that's great. So, I mean, what are, what are some of the things that if, you know, that people need to do to, to um, you know, move forward, especially if they're trying to build a brand online and they're trying to get out there, they're trying to build a business. So, I mean, I know you've talked about it already, but if you can nail it down to like a couple things that people can do right now to shift their outcome and, and who they are and, and change from like, you know, some of these things that are bothering them to moving towards freedom. Like, what are a couple of things that people should really focus on? I know we just talked about anxiety, but what else? Well, I think a limiting beliefs come into it, definitely. So whenever you feel like, you know, there's a challenge coming up and you feel really uncomfortable about it, ask yourself why that might be. So if, for instance, you've been invited on a podcast and you're a little concerned about speaking or what you might say, so where is that coming from? You know, what, it, what is it? What is the actual feeling? Is it nervousness? And, and quite often it's how we label the feeling that is causing the problem. So when, okay. for example, you know, a lot of people don't want to be online because there's some insecurity or that they've been told that they're not good at it or maybe imposter syndrome because they don't feel they know enough or, <laughs> you know, all of these things come in. But it's, it's asking yourself, OK, what is that feeling? Why is that feeling come up? Can I reframe that feeling? So is it excitement rather than nervousness? Because they feel pretty much the same. 
So, um, and the other thing really is think about the language you're using because your mind is listening to you. Our minds are, are determined to check for danger and to keep us away from anything that could be harmful to us. So if we're saying things like the kids are driving me insane or the commute to work is killing me, then your mind is going to say, hey, you're not going to get in that car to go to work. Let's give you an upset stomach or let's do whatever we can to stop you going there because you keep telling me that it's going to kill you and I can't allow that to happen. So the language we use to ourselves is incredibly important. Yeah, uh, I, I'm sure you're big on this. This is something that I learned when I was in college. It was like 2005 or whenever it came out. But the the book, The Secret, mm -hmm. the, the Law of Attraction and being introduced to that concept, I think that's that's really helped me mentally become whole. I mean, because there's a lot of things that could creep in as negative thoughts and recognizing that and then turning into a positive yeah. and not worrying about the past, but, uh, but creating a plan. Cause if something's not working, then that's telling me through the, through my like beliefs and my, my feelings that that is not, I'm not in alignment with who I am. Mm -hmm. So I need to make an adjustment and what does make me feel whole, which, what work can I do? What, things can I focus on? I'm talking from a business standpoint, because I've gone through this many times in my business where I start serving clients, but I'm doing things that I don't really love to do. And I'm not feeling the energy. I'm not feeling excited about it, but then I yeah. keep doing it anyway, keep doing it anyway, keep doing it. But then, you know, if you, if you pay attention to that, find out what is working, what you, what does make you feel great? Where do you get the most praise from clients like oh my gosh you're so amazing all the time and then that's something that you can focus on start generating more cash and then start moving into it so i mean what, yeah. what are your thoughts about that well i think th there's two things there what we focus on gets bigger so if we're focusing on what isn't working then that they'll become bigger problems so if we focus on what is working, focus on the things where you want to move things forward. So rather than sort of dwell on things that didn't quite go well, let it go. It's done. It's dusted. Let's focus on the next step. You only actually need to know the next step. And progress is progress. It doesn't matter if it's just a small step or a great big leap. It, it all progress is progress. So always moving, asking yourself when every decision comes up, is this moving me towards my goal or away from my goal? And that will help you make a, a good decision. The other thing is being careful not to outsource your well-being, because when we are looking for external validation to decide where we're going and what you know what we're doing, then we we start feeding off that, and we can lose our direction. Because if we're getting really good uh, feedback in one particular area, but that's not really where we should be focusing, it can pull us. So whilst it's great to receive praise, um, and we all like that, we all love to be told how great we're doing, it's about making sure that that doesn't pull you off your, your, your track as such or where you want to go. Yeah. Yeah. I will say this. When I started off in my career, I was doing, I had two strategies. I had Facebook marketing and I was, do, the number one thing that I was doing was local business marketing, you know, and Billy mm -hmm. Jean in, in San Diego, he also was focused on that. And he's built a massive business focusing on generating business for local businesses. And I learned that concept because not a lot of local businesses knew how to do marketing. So I could literally go in there, throw a, an ad with a call button on Google where they're spending, you know, 20 bucks a day and they're getting 50 calls for people to order pizza because now they have an ad at the top when people are looking for like, you know, order pizza for La Jolla pizza, they're, they're, they're calling. And I started getting restaurants like 50, like their lines out the door. They're getting so many new sales. And I started doing that for like all these types of businesses in San Diego. So I built their website and I would do a couple strategies. And that was honestly like a very scalable, profitable, like amazing business that I feel like I could have just blown it out of the water. And instead, I also had a Facebook marketing strategy 
and I landed Brendan Burchard as a client. So I always think about, I always think about these things, right? Because I could have went the path down the path of being the Google plus. We were the Google plus guys because we were using Google plus to drive traffic for local businesses and we were getting massive success. So that was like my number one choice of where we were headed. Number two was to become the, the penny light guys, the, the Google plus guys for local business or the penny light guys. Okay. So I look back at it and a more scalable, sustainable model would have done the local thing. Cause we were doing, that was our number one thing. It wasn't number two. It was number one. Number two, I got thrown tons of cash from Brendan Burchard. We blew him out of the water. We put down the, the local strategy and we started doing the Facebook thing and started making a ton of cash. Yeah. But then it wasn't like we could go and get Tony Robbins next and some of these other people because we were working with Brendan and we didn't want to like mess up that relationship. So we were like tippy toeing around with who we worked with. Yeah. So it wasn't scalable and like sustainable. And then Facebook got shut down. Brendan's like, this is terrible. You know, then he jumped from Facebook to Instagram and some of these other platforms and I'm st- sitting there stuck like where do i go now you know so yeah. like and i always think about there's there's a couple of things in my career one of them was when i did my my course launch and i should have just kept doing it because it was working so well we we're making so much money we should have kept pushing it out but then we would have been pushing a strategy that ended up in a year's time not being sustainable anyway because because mark zuckerberg changed the algorithm so i always go through these things as an entrepreneur yeah. As like, you know, is it a learning point? Should I, you know, like I, it just confuses me in that way, you know, and it's like and it it hurts sometimes to think about it. There's limiting beliefs about it, you know. So anyway, I just wanted to share all that with you. So I think. Sometimes, yeah, I think sometimes with that, what what we do is is we compare what is so where we're at now with what might have been. Mm. And but the what might have been is made up. It's it's yeah, it's exactly. pretend stuff. It's, it's been, so real. Uh, yeah, it's it's so success at the top of pinnacle. You know, millions yeah. of dollars, and you know, I'm like, buying an you island. You know, yeah, exactly. it's probably not even close to that. Anyway, keep no, going. exactly. You don't know that. So it's that comparison thing again. You know, okay, so I've hit a bump here. Things aren't going quite well. So if only I'd done that instead, that would have been brilliant. Well, that's nonsense because you don't know that. So all you have is what you have now. So, yeah, we get, we hit bumps. You know, that's life. It, you know, if everything was smooth sailing, we'd all be really bored. So, you know, challenges help us grow, help us learn things. The world is always evolving. We are we are not living in medieval times, you know, and and the last couple of years, the world has evolved in in two, two to three years. It would have taken 10 or 12 years to get there but because of, of what happened. So it is, it's always a moving face and we have absolutely no control over pretty much anything apart from our reaction. So, you know, it's, it's expect, expect all of that to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So that's normal. So if that's, that's going to be a normal thing. What's your best advice that I should focus on right now to, you know, just keep going. Cause right now, I mean, like I, I've been through some serious ups and downs, you know, over the over my career, you know, and it's like it's almost like it turns on a dime all the time. You know, right now, everything's going well with our coaching and focusing on that. And, you know, the software is going in that direction. I want to talk to you about that, too, because we're you know, Dawn's been working with us in the software. She's certified as an influencer soft specialist. So. You know, she's got a lot of skills and I'm really excited to work with her because I, I know we're going to do something massive together and she understands how the mind works, you know, so that and you've and you're a great speaker. I mean, you're articulating it. We got people, you know, like Brenda saying nicely said, Don, and I wanted to say that a 100 times already. You're a very, you know, clear, concise, articulate speaker. So I appreciate that. So. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, you know what? What's next? I mean, what what's next for you? How are you going to use this knowledge to to um, you know focus on your business? 
and, and what, what's the next step? Well, I've got two avenues. I, I, I look at the limiting beliefs, anxiety type thing in my sort of therapy with my therapy coaching hat on, um, which is always really interesting because, you know, seeing transformation in people when they're really stuck, you know, their, their lives have ground to a halt and they, they can't move forward and helping them do that is is amazing and great. And I do that. Um, but on the other side of things, the the, the tech stuff that I've been doing with you yeah. has really opened up a, a different avenue, being able to help people in a, in a different way. And, but the, the link there is anxiety because when you mm. are a coach, consultant, trainer, speaker, whatever you are, and the idea is, oh, I've got to go online now. You know, the world has moved I've got to get online. Oh, that's tech stuff. And, you know, we used to a lot of stuff and, and, you know, we all have varying amounts of understanding of these things. But, you know, certainly at, at my time in life, the idea of getting my head around coding, it's just not going to happen, you know, and yeah. having <laughs> to sort of get on top of some of these programs um, and some of this software to be able to achieve what we're looking to achieve is and it was, I just found it mind blowing, which is why I ended up at, with Influencer Soft. So, yeah. Well, you've been doing a great job. I mean, you catch on quick and you're definitely doing it. And, um, you know, that's one thing that I really, you know, mastered in that way is understanding how to create a business from nothing. You know, like people need an offer, you need to figure out how to position that offer. And, create a sales process that works, that brings people down a path and, and makes them really understand that they need what you have. So yeah. you got you to gotta create the messaging and the story that relates to people well enough so they can make an informed decision to buy what you have, but then also package up what you have in a, in a way that is actually going to help somebody. You know, yeah. and that's what I've learned. And, you know, then driving the traffic in and spending less money on traffic than you are on actual profit and then getting in a position to scale and find partners and affiliates and, and build a system that works. That's what I'm really excited about. And, you know, that understanding that that like all the pieces and being able to put it together consistently has definitely helped me get the confidence to just, you know, keep doing this and, and keep growing this, you know, and I, I got to give a huge shout out to my team. I mean, Sharice Marie Sutherland, she's been amazing helping me out. I know you've worked with her a lot. Yeah. You know? and, is great. Uh, yeah. She's, she's been my saving grace. Cause you know, I fell on my face a couple of times working with a couple teams and you know, it just didn't work out for whatever reason. And um, you know, we just didn't create the, the right chemistry and the right solution for the customers. But, you know, we're really drilling this thing down and I'm really excited for it. And, um, yeah, I know there's still limiting beliefs there. I'm trying to get rid of all of that stuff so we can get to the highest level. And, you know, and one thing that people always talk about in this type of thing in online business is they're not charging enough, right? You're, you're worth, you know, $10,000 and you're charging two hundred dollars for something you know but what 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 do you have to say about that because a lot of people they'll say that or you know they'll even accuse me of that when i've sold hundred thousand dollars million dollar packages and hundred well you know like what, what would you say about that you know the raising your prices syndrome you know brendan burchard talked about it a lot when i was working with him you know raise your prices double it right now whatever your prices are for every single one of your programs double it right now like what are, what are your thoughts about that i think there's a i think there's a sweet spot i think there's a lot of people that are selling incredibly expensive programs and the value isn't there yeah so <laughs> that, that's 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 where the anxiety cuz i've sold like $50,000 funnels and then in the end, I lose money because they're like, I spent 50 grand. I'm not making 50 grand back. Well, we didn't have a strategy for you to launch this thing. I didn't have control over where the yeah. traffic was going to cut. Like there's all these things, right? So anyway, keep going. I think when when it comes to online programs, I, I think it's about proving, proving 
that they work, getting some results. So go out there with it at a, a nice, affordable price, prove that it works. And then once you start getting some momentum, you can nudge the price up, you know, double in, triple in, five to five X in it. I, I don't know. I mean, it's 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 quite subjective, <laughs> but it's about being in alignment with what you want to do. Because there's a lot of people out there that are making a fortune on low ticket items. They're selling stuff for $27 and they are mm -hmm. making an absolute fortune. So it's not a one size fits all. And I think when we start comparing or taking <laughs> everybody else's opinion on it, that's yeah. where the anxiety comes in. So do what you feel is right for you. Um, and it will become apparent. I'm a great believer that things will always work out the way they're supposed to work out. And we might need to take a bumpy path to get there. But if own sort of feelings and understandings and goals, then it will work out in the end. Yeah. Uh, what you just said triggered something I was watching something on Instagram at some point and Will Smith popped up saying that I don't take advice from anybody because that's their reality. It's yeah. not my reality. So like mm -hmm. literally asking somebody for their opinion about something, they don't know the answer because they're not the one that has to deal with the consequences. No. That's all, that's all me. Right. But, yeah. but people go out there and, and buy online courses they hire consultants. Oprah Winfrey's got 10 coaches for all these things and all these people talk about this. So where's the fine line between what people should seek advice for or get help with and hire somebody and take somebody's opinion that actually helps? Because I've had people's opinions that came in, they told it to me. And I'm like, man, that changed my whole life. And then I've had other people's opinions that come in that, that made sense. And then I felt like, man, for whatever reason, that took me down a very dark path. Yeah. So where's the fine line in like that truth? Because, you know. Yeah, it is hard. But there's, there's a difference between a consultant and a coach and a mentor. Mm. So if you, if you um, employ a consultant to come in, they're telling you what you need to do. That's their mm -hmm. job. That's what yeah. they're, they're doing. You know, a mentor is showing you what they've done for you to take it or leave it. Yeah. And a coach and a coach is about helping you discover it for yourself. Mm -hmm. So a coach should never be telling you what you should be thinking or what you should be doing. It's about unpacking. It's about, you know, what I do is help people realize that they have every resource they need for whatever life they want within them. Mm. So all of those things that happiness, that compassion everything is inside of somebody so it's about unpacking it it's like that diamond that that's buried under all that pressure and all that stuff all we need to do is uncover it and then let the diamond shine yeah no i love that because yeah, i mean i'm every day you know as an entrepreneur i learn more about myself than I think I ever would have, because you're held accountable for every action, everything that you do as an entrepreneur. So, and you know your faults a lot clearer. You know, it's like you go in and you don't have as much at stake and you just get a comfortable life and you're just, you got your, your beer in this hand, your sports games on, you're just like comfortable, you got your family and you go to your job and you come home. And you're not really discovering like deep down who you are, you know, and that's one thing that I really love about entrepreneurship is, yes, at times there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of rejection. There's a lot of this and that and the other. But it teaches you to be a fighter. It teaches you to be a survivor. It teaches you to go the extra mile. It, it teaches you to be better. And, yeah. and I think that you got to dig within yourself to find the answer. Ultimately, other people can help guide you and, and nudge you this way or that way yeah. and like for good or for bad. But ultimately, you have to decipher that for yourself and and make sense of that so you can move forward. So I really I really appreciate how you broke that down there, because, you know, that that there, there's a lot of th this topic that we're going over that I feel like is confusing but you've 
you've been studying it. How long have you been studying this for? Like this type of stuff? Well, human behavior. I've been teaching people since the 80s. From the eight, since the 80s. Okay. So I was born in 1982. So probably even before, uh, like right around the time I was born. So you, like, I wasn't, back then I wasn't learning. So we can learn a lot <laughs> from somebody that's been doing yeah. it for 40 years. Uh, one, one thing I want to point out, because I was watching um, a game the other day, and, and one of the players, he's having a great season, okay, baseball player. He's having a great season above and beyond. what I mean, he's, he's, he's a great player already, but he's having a season above and beyond better than he's had in, like, his whole career this year. And he attributed it to, to – mindset training like yeah. training his mind and you know some meditation stuff and positive thinking and you know just watch listening to things that fed positive thoughts into his head and then all of a sudden he slowed down he talks about slowing down <clears throat> seeing things visualizing things just in being in the moment in a slower pace so yeah. he could actually like catch the ball better, hit the ball better, make a good decision on w when he's going to run, how fast he's going to run, you know, like just all these things that just people react because they're too like in the moment and they're just scared deer in the headlights. He's poised and confident. Yeah. And he's just been like actually slower, slowed down in his mind, but he's been doing a lot of training. So, you know, I was thinking what? Like in baseball, I mean, these people go through slumps and all these things. And you can tell, like, you know, some people they can't, you know, they have a bad month where they're like the worst player in the league. And then they're the best player for the rest of the season. So, like, why doesn't every baseball player have somebody like you or somebody <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. have you consulting with them? Yeah. I mean, these people are, some of them are paid $30 million a year. You would think that they would want the best possible mindset to go out there and play the game, right? And this goes yeah. with any sport. I think you should be like a million, you know, <laughs> million dollar consultant for these people, right? And there should be these type of people that they use. But instead, what do they do? They go home and play Fortnite. They go home and like, you know, do stupid stuff. And then they end up like ruining their whole career. You know? But it's we we live in a sort of trance most of the time because when we're doing stuff, we're actually thinking about something else. We're not present. We're not dealing with. It. And if you have something that you really adore, have you ever got to the point where you've been really so busy and so focused on something, nothing else is happening around you? You are completely unaware of everything that's going around you, and that is a a, a quiet mind because you're only focusing on one thing. And when we end up with this idea that we've got all these lists of things, we've got all these expectations, we've got all these doubts and worries, and when that fills up our mind, of course we can't focus on anything. And yeah. today's world, you know, how many people actually sit you're and watch- strike out it? 10 times in a row, right? Exactly, <laughs> because your mind is so full, the information that you need has can't come in. Because how many times, and this, this is a, a classic really, when you go, you know, quite often if I've got a, a something I'm trying to solve at work in one of, in one of my various roles, um, and I just, I'm getting a blank. I can't work out. You'll never, what Einstein said, you'll never solve a problem using the same thinking that created it. So it's about letting go, go for a walk, do something else. And how many times have you had in your life where the solutions popped in when you've been doing something mundane, where you've not really been thinking about anything, you are chilled out, you're washing dishes or you're in the shower or you're going for a run or whatever it is. And a solution pops in, the information pops in, because what you've done is you've allowed your mind to quieten down and that gives room to come in. But most of us, what we do is we end up with this massive thought storm in our heads about everything that might go wrong. And remember, I said earlier, what you focus on is is what grows bigger. So if you're focusing on, you know, am I going to hit this right or will I get the run and they're expecting me to do brilliantly, if you just let all of that go and think all I've got to do is hit that ball that's coming towards me, 
That's all yeah. I'm going to do. That is my focus. <laughs> yeah. Hit the ball. Yeah. And everything else, and I, I don't notice the crowd, and I, you know, none of the that. The umpire just missed two calls. Those weren't <laughs> strikes. Those were balls. And you see that every time. They start arguing yeah. with the umpire, and they strike out every exactly. single time. Exactly. Because they don't go of that a home run. now they're thinking about the umpire missed the call. You might as well just go back to the bench. Absolutely. So what they're doing is they're letting all that stuff fill their mind up and they're getting yep. and then they're getting angry because there's something that hasn't that they can't control that has gone against them. So they're getting angry and they're yep. getting annoyed. And, you know, whereas if you just say, OK, fine, you know, and uh, I've seen I've, I've seen it the opposite. I've seen a guy look at the umpire, do this like <laughs> like laugh kind of and then hit a home run. But, yeah. you know, and then the opposite, they start arguing like. Yeah, you know, like to put a look they to take, them, and then yeah, then I know that's that's going to be a bad outcome, and exactly. that that a bad, you know, because they the way they interpret it, they're looking at it through their own insecurities, and they're looking at it and saying, "That's a personal attack on me. That was wrong, and I'm going to take that as a personal attack, and I'm not happy with it, and I'm cross, and I, you know, all those various things." And whereas, you know, if they've got a different mindset, if their mindset is okay, I want to do well in this game. But it is a game. Yeah. And therefore, what I need to focus on is hitting that ball. That's my focus. None of the other stuff that's going on around me. Not, you know, not the people shouting at me from the, the stands or whatever. So it and it works every single time in whatever you're doing. And that's why mindfulness is so good, because if you can just focus in on something really tiny in absolute detail, just for a few moments, everything else goes. All those thoughts go. How many yeah. times you walked into a room and thought, why did I come in here? We can we can let go of our thoughts. We just like to hold on to them and let them build up. Yeah, I, I've I've always experienced like in sports and stuff, you know, like where I'm having fun and the game's easy. And if more coaches, but I've had coaches that are like, if you're having fun, you're not working hard. You know, like, but that's, you know, I, honestly, I'll, I'll work easy. Cause I don't feel pain at that point. I don't even feel like I'm tired. Like I'm not exhausted because yeah. the mind is so powerful. Like you can go run as fast as you can. I mean, there's, there's a certain level where you're going to exhaust yourself. Like if you sprint as hard as you can, but it could be double the amount of time than it could be if you're thinking, like, and you're in a good state, like you're excited. Like I've gone and worked out. Let me tell you this. I've gone and worked out where I could jump six inches higher. I could play like seven games in a row in basketball mm -hmm. and win and just be like free and just feel good and not get tired at all. Like after the sixth game, I'm like exhausted, but it's only my body, not my mind. Okay. No, exactly. But so I still feel like I could play more, but I probably shouldn't cause I'm going to be really, really sore and I won't be able to play for like two weeks. But say I land some big deal, some big client, something big happens. Yeah. I go to the gym and I'm like, you know, I, I'm excited. So I'm like really getting it, you know, and everything's clicking and I'm not just like there my, mentally fatigued. And I'm like, man, if, if I was like this every single day, this would be amazing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and it can be though. Right. There's some it can people be. They show up every day and they're just like, why has that guy got an extra bounce in his step? Yeah. And it's learning right to let go step. of those unhelpful thoughts because, you know, I, I had one client who, who, um, massive anxiety. And, you know, I said to her, so if you're in, in your anxiety state and you hear a thud upstairs and you, your partner has fallen over, What's your reaction? You don't sit there in your anxiety state and ignore that. You will snap out of it immediately and because there is a different focus. There is something else. So when that can happen, that you, we can learn to do that. We can learn to change where we're at. We can learn to change our limiting beliefs and create new ones. So all of this is, you know, it's not our natural state to be in that state of anxiety constantly or constantly depressed or or limiting ourselves you know life is about experience and all the good stuff and the bad stuff and just sort of saying okay well that's fine let's carry on 
Yeah, yeah. You get a bad call, you get something go against you. I mean, you can laugh it off, or you could get upset and turn it into ten bad things, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's some. You know, sometimes it's really hard if it's something really bad, and you're like, oh my gosh, like, you know, it's hard to to make that a positive. But if you can get really good at even the worst things that happen, turn it into a positive, like a death or a, a sudden thing that just really hurts you. And you can find a way to turn that into a positive amongst all the anxiety and fear and stress and every, all the negative things. You can turn it into a grateful state. Well, I'm glad I had that person for this amount of time. The faster you can do that, I think the better off you'll be, you know. And also that, you know, the feelings that come up with those sorts of things are natural human feelings. When we watch a scary movie, we're supposed to feel scared. When we watch a sad movie, we're supposed to feel sad. That's Mm -hmm. how it works. And so many people don't want to feel a range of emotions. They Mm -hmm. shy away from things that might make them sad or um, nervous or anxious or when actually the human experience is about having all of that. You know, and realizing that it is a feeling. It's not just because I feel scared because I'm watching the movie doesn't mean I'm in danger. You know, the movie isn't going to come and kill me, but I'm my body is reacting by what I'm seeing and the thoughts around what I'm seeing. So when we understand all of that and understand that actually it's our thoughts that create our feelings. So if we're feeling nervous or we're feeling, you know, anxious, we we think, oh, well, what am I thinking about? What language am I using to myself? What am I saying to myself? Yeah, it's like in in the movie, The Secret, you know, Dr. Michael Beckwith, he talks about, and I I always think about this when I was like, you know, really focusing and practicing, you know, the, the secret when I was learning, when I was first starting, I was like thinking about, well, I just had a negative thought. So I had another negative thought because I just had a negative thought. And then that's another negative thought that I just had two negative thoughts in a row after I had a negative. Like, so it starts, you know, doing that. And he said, well, the good news is that the negative thoughts are not as powerful as positive thoughts. Now, yeah. though, to even go another step further in what you're saying, which I think is an even better way to look at it, not that he's. Uh, and I can listen to him all day, no, no matter what. But I think this is a better way to look at that is you're going to have negative thoughts and, and that's OK and actually be, be OK with that. So like it's taken a lot of pr- stress and pressure off yeah. that now I'm not trying to be perfect with like my thoughts. Like I'm OK with having a negative thought because I'm like, actually, that's good because it's supposed to happen, you know, rather than like yeah. worrying about it. And then it just starts. Yeah, because I because I always thought, okay, I'm gonna do like the per, I'm gonna be like the best law of attraction mind of all time, <laughs> and it's like now I don't even care. Now I'm no. just like, but, I, but I'm conscious of it. You know what I mean? But that's piling on more anxiety, isn't it? That's expectation yeah. and and yeah. and trying to be. The thing is, your <laughs> thoughts don't define you. You know, we've all looked at somebody and we've judged somebody and we've sort of had some, you know, not so great thoughts about things. But that isn't who we are. That is our mind, because the human mind is very good at giving explanation or finding explanation. And if there isn't a really clear explanation for something, it makes something up. So our mind is always looking to explain things. So sometimes there's some weird thing that sort of crops in and we don't always um, know what to do. Have you, have you gone, Jesse? <laughs> Sorry about that. We're still up. Oh. We're still live. Sorry. Sorry, Dan. I, I, I was, my trackpad, I accidentally, when you like double swipe, it like went back. It's, sorry. We're still live though. Um, I forgot what I was saying. No, I've lost my I thought. Know, yeah, it's yeah, gone. Yeah, but, yeah, well, we'll get it back. Yeah. So, so at the end of the day, guys, we've, we've talked about a lot of really powerful things here. And Dawn is... Dawn is an expert at what she's doing and she can help so many people. I mean, I've learned a ton, 40 years of experience. I, I, every time I interview somebody, I thought I knew you, but I really didn't, you know? And it's like, that's why I like this. Cause I never know what's going to happen and what we're going to talk about. 
I mean, I, I go away from these podcasts a better person. You know, and I really appreciate you coming on. You've helped out, but not just me, because the stuff we talked about relates to the whole world. Yeah, we're all humans. We have the same patterns of like yeah. thinking and what's going on. And, you know, there's just so much value here. So let, let's take this time. I want to promote you so people can get in touch with you. So go to findingfreedom.club and you can book a discovery call with Don. You just click yeah. on it. We'll share screen. I'll show you guys what to do here. Exactly what to do. You guys need this in your life. Trust me. I'm going to book my call because <laughs> this is amazing. we got to take this to the next level. Okay, so here's Dawn's website. Okay, so go to findingfreedom.club. And now you can scroll down and click any of these yellow buttons. You can go about. You can read up on her. Learn, see some testimonials, click on testimonials. But what I really want you guys to do is book a discovery session with Don. Okay. If you're a pro athlete, which we talked about, <laughs> you should definitely book a call with an expert like her. She could be that missing piece, just like that chiropractor, that trainer, that nutritionist. Your mind is everything that controls your body. So she's going to help that finding freedom in your career, in your life, and what you're doing, she's she's a top person. I mean, I feel way better after this session. This I don't know what to call it therapy. It's it's definitely <laughs> like you know empowering experience of this this hour that we spent together. Make sure you get on here, get a call with her, and take your life to the next level. I mean, it's it's your life. You have a choice to make on on what you're going to do to move forward. And, you know, you get a 30 minute call with her. It's only going to help you. OK, she's amazing at what she does. And she's she's a huge part of our community. OK, so make sure you go there. It's up there on the screen. Finding freedom dot club and book your time with her. So, yeah, Don, thank you so much for coming on. One thing that I do want to talk about, which we didn't really mm -hmm. talk much about, but um, why did you choose our platform Influencer Soft? I know yeah. you, uh, you joined and we've been working together. And, you know, so I, I, I've been working with Don and my team and, you know, our platform and what we're doing. And her skills are so amazing that, you know, we've been learning from each other. But wh why did you choose Influencer Soft over some of the other platforms out there? Well, I did try some of the other platforms out there. And, um, <laughs> and did, did, haven't I, we all? I've tried them all too. So, yeah. Yeah. So um, I got a, I, I tried a few, most of them will do sort of 30 days so you can play around with them. So I had a look at those and, and, you know, I wasn't impressed. It, they were either very basic and I needed to join other programs in. And I thought, no, nah, too much. I'm not, you know, I'm not that technically minded. So um, I tried a, a one other of the sort of combined ones, but the, the, I mean, it was, it blew my mind in not a good way. It was complicated. It was overly techy and loads of jargon. Didn't really understand it. So I, I binned that before the free trial um, finished. And then so I thought there's got to be other programs here. So I started Googling, searching, and I came across Influencer Soft. So I. Uh, so we had some SEO or some search. Um, yeah. There. <laughs> I know, to be honest, I, I don't really know. Um, I, I think what happened, it probably came up on my Facebook feed after I'd been searching, you know, how mm. they all sort of linked. But I, I clicked on it and I thought, you know, this this looks so much better so i decided to sort of jump in i thought well i'm i'm losing the will to live um trying to find something so let's give a go with this and i didn't look back i mean it was just incredible <laughs> i you know if you can manipulate a word document and you know those sorts of things you can you can use influencer soft and i the page builder i spent a fortune getting a website done <laughs> buy somebody, pay somebody to do it, spent hours and hours going through and getting all the copy. I had to do all the copy myself, but, you know, the pictures and design and, and the works. And then after about six months, he delivered it to me and explained how I go in the back end to this 
horrible program. And it wasn't just the, you know, the back end being super complicated and looking really scary. It was also, he signed me up to all these other things that I had to pay for as well. So I thought, well, I, you know, that's ridiculous, you know? Um, so with Influencer Soft, what I did is I literally recreated all of that website on Influencer Soft. And that's what you, you showed just now. That's what somebody designed for me. Um, and I've literally just taken it from, it was on WordPress and, and recreated it. And it was super yeah, easy yeah. to do. Incredible. Love it. And that's why I got certified because this is something that everyone should know about. It's, it's an incredible program. Yeah. So Dawn, she said she's not technical and she was looking for platforms. She got certified. How many videos did you have to watch? And we had to take a test and all that. Like it wasn't yeah. that easy though, right? How long no, 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 it wasn't easy. I think, yeah. I think there was about at least 200 lessons or something to we go have 200 through. lessons. So we don't make it easy, but she's certified. <laughs> she knows how to use it from top to bottom. Yeah. And she's not even technical, she's saying. So no, I mean, no. that, that's saying something right there, because, you know, there's a lot of beginners out there that are spending a, a fortune on software and we have a, a really great program. And, you know, we're really launching people with our coaching program now. It's just, yeah, I just feel blessed now. I mean, it's been a it's been a journey and a in a road to get to where we are. And I think, you know, 2023 is going to be massive for the platform. I mean, we're getting our dev team back. We're going to start really like, you know, pushing the brand. I got some big deals I'm working on that are going through and everything's looking solid. So I appreciate you just being a supporter, being somebody there that's and and Don, she's working with uh, with a guy. We're going to talk through it, but she's a JV manager for a top guy in the industry. So we're working on, you know, lining some things up for the brand influencer soft or her stuff, helping her get some better JVs. So. But, you know, she's she's just very resilient. She has overcame a lot. She's been through some things that have drove her to really master the mind and, and be in the best state, the best Don Morgan possible out there in the world. And that's something to be said. Now she's helping other people do the same thing in their life to become the best version of themselves. And I think when we do that, we can all share our gifts with the world. We're going to get have be successful. We're going to make a lot of money. We're going to have beyond big influence out there. So I really, really appreciate this session, Don. Thanks for coming on the beyond big influence show. All the influencers out there that are watching this, make sure you go rewatch the entire episode because you're going to learn so much about yourself. And, you know, as I get to know Don more, we'll bring her back on the show at some point and we start working together. We'll share the results. We'll share what's happening and you know I'll share my results and I'll interview her at even a deeper level as we get to know each other more. So we appreciate you guys for tuning in. Don any last words you want to share with the people? Uh no, just just learn to live your life. Let let go of all that baggage. All right. You heard it from her yourself guys. So thank you for tuning in. It's the Beyond Big Influence show. You're an influencer. You influence people every single day. Check out InfluencerSoft.com. Make sure you join our platform and we can help you go to the next level online and build your influence. So until next time, we'll see you later. Bye, everybody.